Well, by the clock on the wall, it's 6.30, and I believe uh, your time is valuable, so I think we should get started on time, and whoever comes in, comes in, and we'll have a, a good time. And uh, but I, th I think we ought to start with a word of prayer, and we'll begin there, and then we'll kind of walk through some topics and give you a chance to ask questions along the way and those kinds of things. And so those of you that are joining uh, by the stream or watching this recording later, uh, I'm going to give you a text number. So if you want to ask a question, you can text it in. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I just thank you for um, the people that have worked hard to make this meeting a possibility. Uh, Karen, my wife, Jeannie, upstairs running the, the computers and uh, everyone who's contributed information and uh, kept records and and all of those things that have gone into making this meeting positive. It's great to be back somewhat in person, uh, even though the crowd is split uh, in person and digital, Lord. Um, our, our meeting in, in August is always a little bit crazy with the start of school and all the activities. It's hard to find a time to have this meeting. And so I just, I'm oh so thankful for those that have carved out the time to be here in person. Lord, uh, let the time that we spend together be uh, beneficial. I pray this in your name. Amen. All right. Well, if you're watching online, let me give you just a little bit of instructions. It is a straight web stream this week or this time rather than the Zoom meeting just because I didn't think I could manage in person and Zoom and ask questions and do both justice. So um, if you want to ask a question on the stream, just know this, you're about a minute behind us in real time. That's just the way the streaming engine works uh, for our church. But let me give you a phone number. So write this down. I'll, I'll do my radio thing and give it to you twice. Ready? 512-962-9330. 512-962-9330. That's my desk Zoom number. And uh, it should come to my phone when we get to the point to ask questions. So if you're watching online, I would love to know that. Just go ahead and text me uh, your uh, first and last name. That'd be super beneficial. It's okay, Christine, come on through. It's quite all right. <laughs> you know, we don't stand on a great deal of formality here, okay? So we're excited that you're here. So every meeting needs an agenda in my book. And so here's our agenda tonight. We're, we've already kind of done the welcome. We always have started uh, the whole uh, nine years that I've now have been here. We've started looking at statistics. We spent a lot of time on statistics and, and where groups were and those sort of things. We just over the years have pared that down, especially since Shelby next, because basically anything I can give you, you can go click on it and get it you know, uh, Sunday by Sunday anymore. But we'll look a little bit about that. We're going to talk briefly about literature. We're going to talk about some of the changes that are coming to literature and uh, kind of where that's going. Uh, there's some decisions that have been made about that. We're going to spend a, a little bit of time talking about roles and attendance and kind of where we are and kind of some things that need to happen. And then I'm going to give you just a brief update on the church health survey, just a little bit of information from it, where the staff and some of the leadership teams are and beginning to digest that information. And so uh, that'll be good. And we'll talk just briefly about the schedule. I'll update you on that. And then, as always, we'll spend some time doing questions and answers. We're going to move through at a good pace because I haven't had supper yet. And... Uh, you know how I like to eat. So let's just do a little bit of statistics. There's not, at this point, just coming back from uh, lockdown and uh, the statistics just aren't real accurate. So I was just kind of like, this time I just want to look at some big general trends and maybe compare to them to some of the information that I've given you in the past. And so as we um, get ready to do that, Karen is taking the time to prepare the packet for you. And you can pick those up uh, here at the, at the table if you're coming in. We'll get those to you. Karen's available to help you. You can also, we'll put them in a, in a container in the church office on Sunday if you're watching online so that you can come by and pick your packet up if you're here Sunday. We will even mail it to you if you call and ask. So 
Just call Karen if you want it mailed to you. And then, like I said before, all of this information that you've received is available in Shelby. So there's like a roll sheet, uh, prospects if we still have any for your class, um, people that um, have missed more than nine weeks in a row, the hot list, the normal stuff that's there. And so, um, and we'll talk some more about those kind of things as, as we move through this. So the first thing I want to do, this was the last time that we met by Zoom. This is the statistical graph last time. And we were talking about everything being under this yellow line, remember? And so the blue line was last year. The current line is orange. And pretty much this 200 line, everything was under the 200 line as far as worship attendance. So our worship attendance in uh, you know November, December, January, it's the last time we got together, had really taken a nosedive, um, and we were only counting, you know, somewhere uh, you know the average was about 200. So I just transferred that line over to where we are now, and so obviously this time last year there was no worship going on uh, except online, and so. <laughs> That 200 line is now all orange bars. Well, there's one way over here. But um, our worship attendance is beginning to bounce back pretty well. And so we're, we're consistently kind of eking back into between 350 and 400, 450. And so um, worship attendance is coming back. Now, some of you are looking and go, well, wait a second. What about these really low bars in here? Um, that, those are low because there's three Sundays in there where nobody counted a worship service. And so I, I just want, as a disclaimer, that's why they're low and they would affect the average that way because um, the, whoever was counting wasn't here to count and it just didn't get recorded. And then um, I'm not big on guessing. So that's kind of how that, that happens, okay? So things as far as worship is very how's worship how are things at First Baptist we're coming back, and you can see that statistically. This is uh, Sunday school attendance or biblical community attendance. Same thing. Here's that line from last year. This is for adults. Your students are upstairs, um, and we were kind of at 225. I just took that line, transferred it over to this year, and you can kind of see last year in the blue we were way down here. And with lots of Bible studies meeting at different times, it's what all those little blue hashes are through there. And our uh, worship, our Sunday school attendance is coming back, and we're starting to get back into the 300s on a fairly consistent basis. And so that's good. I, I suspect Sunday school attendance is low partly because of the, the move to the centralized check-ins. Um, and so we'll talk about that in a little bit. We, we do need some help, and we need you to help people to understand kind of why we're doing it. Because if we can move the attendance-taking process outside of the Sunday school hour, that's a couple more minutes for Bible study. And so, uh, and there's some other reasons. We'll cover that in a little bit. But if people ask, how's Bible study doing? No, we're not back uh, worship at 600 plus numbers, and we're not back to Sunday school numbers at 600 plus. And, but we are kind of getting back to where we're within the margins that we were before, and we're going in the right direction. With all that said, the numbers are going up again. The last couple of weeks, um, the adult division has dropped about 20 a Sunday. Some of that's going back to school. One, one Sunday, none of our 30-year-old families were here. Like, there were no first and second graders in the building. You know, they were, everybody, I guess, went to see grandma or something. But we've had a couple, about three weeks where we've dropped to 20, just boom, boom, boom. Um, and so that may be just people getting ready to go back to school. I suspect it's a little bit of that, but I also think it's probably a little bit of, of um, just uh, COVID protection. And de I definitely want to be in support of that. Virginia Woods called and said, hey, I'm just, I can't come back and teach until this turns in the other direction. And so uh, obviously things like that affect our attendance, five here, three or four there, it's 20 pretty quick. 
Okay. Any questions about that? It's kind of pretty much just what we would have expected to have happen. This is adult attendance and it just reflects what I talked about. Here's, here's last uh, uh, February, January, uh, November, December, January, that quarter. And you know that we were at 150 for adults. I just brought that line over and kind of see we're starting to get back above it and stay above it in the adult division. Is it where I want it to be? Certainly not. Um, and the the scales are vastly different. This scale is 400 and this is 250. So this doesn't is not as good as it looks if you factor in the scale. And so, um, but we're heading in the right direction. That's the that's the big thing. So any questions about any of that real quickly? You've got your class. You can look at the graphs for your class. If you don't know how to do that, just make an appointment. I'll come to your house or we can sit down here with a coffee or I'll meet you at Starbucks and I'll show you how to get the graphs, print the, the stuff and manipulate the computer um, so that you can, can do some easy things with Shelby. It needs to work for you, not you work for it, okay? All right, seeing no questions, we're speeding towards supper, okay? I think that's going to hold y'all at bay tonight, all right? So let's talk about adult literature for just a second. And so um, curriculum, um, you know, we, we my intent was to was have a nine-month discussion about curriculum, and then we started it, and COVID hit. And... Then we had this season of fracturing and groups are meeting and not meeting and we kind of lost the drive to do anything adult curriculum wise. Um, and the issue in my book was more about getting people together for Bible study than to trying to consolidate to curriculums and those sort of things. And so basically kind of where I wound up with the decision is it's your choice. Um, we're, we're kind of back. Here's where I, I told Bob this this afternoon. We're kind of back to the point when I came here. I need to earn the right to begin to help us consolidate curriculum again. You know your learners. You know what they like. But until our church kind of gets through a visioning process and we have a clear understanding of what we're trying to do as far as Christian discipleship, I, I don't think I'm in the position to say, hey, you should do this and here's why. Because I can't give you the why at this point. So I'm just going to give you the shopping list and you can shop and then I'll give you some, here's how we're going to kind of play this out. And so approved choices. If you want to teach something out of these curriculum lines, you don't even have to ask. You just can, when the order comes out, let Karen know and we'll just switch you, okay? So um, the approved choice is obviously a gospel project. That's still going to be our primary driver, and I'll explain that in a minute. But it's print and digital, okay? The, explore the Bible. Don't have to ask. It's also a very good curriculum. It is, comes out print and digital as well. Master Works is a Lifeway curriculum that's uh, packaged in six-week terms with one lesson generally or a six and a seven week lesson. It, it repeats on about a two year cycle um, and it's six week sessions written by popular authors. There is no teacher's book per se and there is no student book. It just is the material, okay? And so if you're a great discussion leader um, or your, your class all likes to prepare and you just like to get together and discuss it, Masterworks is not bad. It is not the easiest to teach, I will let you know. It does not have does not have a whole lot of extras. There's no website you can go get a creative ideas from or anything like that. It just pretty much, here's the material. It's almost like you went and bought a six-week discipleship training study uh, type material. So Master Masterworks obviously is approved. Pathways or Connect 360, which is the material that's produced through uh, cooperation with the BGTC is available in print and digital. Not digital like LifeWays, we can get a digital PDF and make copies, or you can get the PDF and then email it to people in your class. Their system is a little bit different. But those are, are pre-approved, don't even have to ask me, we can switch those. 
quarter by quarter if if you want. Um, and I and I I think I well, I don't think I know I trust you all enough. Everybody that teaches in the adult division, we have a good enough relationship. I know you know what you're doing. A lot of you have taught more years than I've taught, and um, I think that's important that we we, we kind of give you here's the boundaries. You kind of fit the needs of your your group. And when we as a church have a driving focus, we will um, kind of move on that focus, okay? Does that make sense? Uh, so basically it boils down to no change. I trust you. If I was going to give it a summary, okay? So changes to digital delivery. This will be a mess. And um, in the next couple of weeks, it's going to be a mess. Just be forewarned. Um, and it will be confusing. But ultimately, I think it gives the people that choose the digital option from Lifeway, which would be uh, Explore the Bible or Gospel Project, it, it'll give you a lot more choices. So if you're teaching, you know, there, you won't have to like, we won't send you the kit extra. You'll just go in and you can get the items that you want. Okay. So um, the children's division switched over last week and they were trying to download everything like they used to get the big zip file. There is no big zip file at this point. You have to go in and get the resources week by week. So how will that work? Um, so what we'll do is the MC, the My Curriculum Manager is being phased out where it just sent you an email every week. What will happen is we'll send you an easy link. So we're trying right now to kind of go through and, you know, if you were using Gospel Project and now you've switched to Explore the Bible, we're moving you into that group to get the digital. If you were, we have some folks that were doing Gospel Project and now doing Master Life. Master Life has no digital, so we're taking them out. As so we're trying to clean our list up, because uh, Lifeway and their infinite wisdom just assume that everybody in the church would use the same literature. And it works much like the old paper order where you kind of turned it in and it just kept going until you changed it. Well, that's the way the digital is going to work with the ministry grid. Uh, and that's where it will come from. It'll have a ministry grid address. And uh, that link will carry on and be your account will be usable. You just go in and get it week by week, whenever you want it, need it, that kind of thing. But we're trying to figure out because we have to be a church of a certain size for Gospel Project, a certain church of a certain size for Explore the Bible. We've got to be a church of a certain size for our student ministry, a different church of a different size because of the way it's priced. Um, it's a monthly, uh, like everything in the world, it's now a monthly subscription. Um, and we're trying not to let it break the bank on our budget. And so, um, and you know, we'll, we want people to use digital as much as possible uh, because it does ultimately come cheaper. Printed material has gone up, the digital has gone up, um, all those kinds of things. But I think once the, you get the easy link to begin, you get in it, get your account set up, you'll have to set your a new account up, you get all that done, and you kind of can get in it and start downloading stuff. I think it'll be okay. We can go back and just put everybody in a group and then do the mass email, but we're going to try to do it. They're, they're saying use the easy link. It just makes it better for people. So we're going to try to do it the life way, way first. If that makes sense. Questions about that? So in the next week, probably next week, or first of the week before the curriculum switchover, you'll get a link for the easy link. Uh, so like John's not in his head, he's going to get a Explore the Bible easy link. Um, anybody in your group that wants digital, let us know. We'll, you know, We're trying to figure out our church size right now. And so they'll get, we'll email in mass the easy link and, and go from there. So that's kind of the, the, the way that's going to work. Um, I've seen it. I haven't actually tried to use it yet. 
So um, I can't answer a ton of questions about it, but it's just the way it's going to be because they are phasing out my curriculum manager. Um, it's and, and it's just the way Lifeway does stuff. About every 10 years, they kill something and do something else. Questions about that? Does all, all that make sense? Yes, yeah, Susan. So we'll still be able to access podcasts and uh, who wrote the story and read your interactive teaching kits? And yes, you should. Now, where it winds up, because as Lifeway rolls this forward, Things are moving, and so we may have to find something or find what it becomes, and and we'll just work through that as we as we go. But right now, they haven't said anything about changes of websites. Okay, so most everything are in the additional resources for Gospel Project, but like the kit items, um, they will be more individual. Like I, I don't want the whole kit uh, that week. I just want these two items. And you should be able to just download those two items. Okay, that's a good question. Others about that? I know there's three or four people in here. About half this group uses the digital in one shape, form, or another. So, but if you've got a lot of people in your class are using it in, and somebody doesn't get it in the cutover, let us know and we can, we'll add them, get them an easy link, that kind of stuff. The easy link is keyed to our church. That's how they're making sure that we, if we bought 100, we're not doing 500. So it's our, we, the easy link is our easy link. It'll only work for, well, it, it won't only work for our church, but it'll, it comes with a easy link and a pen, and is my understanding. Yeah. So what should we tell our class members? I mean, when do we start? Be, be watching it from an email from me for, for okay. easy link, because it is switching over. And if there's space in the loop, I'll write a little short blurb about it in the loop. So we start laying the loop out Monday. Yeah, you'll be able to download it. Uh, but you know how the, the, oh, I don't know how you did it, John, but like I, a lot of times I would just like uh, at home, just because it was faster and I didn't want to fool with stuff. I would go in at the beginning of the quarter and I would just download the whole quarter. Because then if somebody called and said, hey, I'm subbing for so-and-so, I'd just roll down the date, kick it out, uh, unzip it, and do it. No, huh? It's downloadable. Yeah. We're buying a license to do that, basically, is what it is. Uh, but you just won't be able to get a, the, like, block block the way you used to at this point. Now, we've already complained about that <laughs> because that's the way we do stuff. Here. Melva has every year of digital literature she's ever taught. She's got a copy on the, on the church server. Um, I have a lot of it downloaded as well. Uh, before we leave my curriculum manager, I'll go through and get a copy of everything that we've used off of that. Because every once in a while, somebody rolls around and goes, hey, I want, I'd I really like the way we taught this two years ago. Do you have a copy? Well, the 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 good and the bad of the my curriculum manager is you download what you need approach. Okay, that's good, but the bad of it is is it's only you're only going to be able to use that link as long as we're paying the monthly subscription. So if we get down to the point and you know. For whatever reason, we decide not to pay the monthly subscription for something or it gets overlooked, all of a sudden you can't go backwards and you'll be able to go backwards in time as long as there's we're, we're paying the money. Uh, but once we pay them, don't pay the money, it's gone. And so that's the that to me is one of the big changes between the my curriculum manager because it just was there. Like all of the copies I've ever purchased or leased, basically. I still have access to. I'm going to be in the same boat that you're talking about. I'm going to have to be a little more diligent to get it if I want to keep it. That's a good question. Though. Anything else about the curriculum part of it? Very good questions, though. And like I said, there, it's a, there's going to be a learning curve. It took us a while to kind of figure out how to get the most out of my curriculum manager. So I think 
the ministry grid will be the same way. If you're not familiar with ministry grid, Lifeway started ministry grid about the same time right now media started and they right now media is more Netflix ish ministry grid. They kind of tried to not copy. So they tried to make it more leadership driven and it just never got a lot of traction that they've invested a lot of money in this engine. And so now they're driving traffic to ministry grid basically. And my curriculum manager, let's face it, it was a little clunky if you used it every week. This Karen will attest, the ordering side of my curriculum manager is way worse than the downloading side. It is nuts to order, look at Karen. I mean, she, she looked like she was you know, 15 years old when she started working for me. It's all because of my curriculum manager. <laughs> Changes to Gospel Project, I sent material home, looked at this, but I want to kind of just recap a couple of things that really what I'm excited about and why I keep kind of promoting it, especially as our church grows, especially as we try to reach younger adults. And we're seeing a lot of people that we were reaching as adults aren't coming from a Baptist background. Um, it's it's going to have an even stronger emphasis on daily Bible reading and advanced preparation. If you haven't seen uh, the learner's guide yet, the learner's guide starts out with um, the day one Bible reading, and it's been expanded. So everything's been expanded. So in the student book, one full page is given to commentary on the portion of scripture you read day one. Day two, same thing, portion of scripture, expanded commentary, question day three day four day five nowhere in there have they printed any bible passage you're going to have to open a bible and read the passage in a real bible and then read the commentary in the book which i think is is a great move because people will begin to either develop better digital skills uh, with a bible or they're going to get out a paper copy and and use that Lifeway also happens to be producing a Bible that's going to work with the, one of the I'll show you in a minute, the Aero system. It still has its doctrinal emphasis, which is one of the things that I like. Uh, Dustin is going to preach, uh, Dustin and this first go around, I, I'll preach on September the 12th. We're going to uh, preach in and around the Gospel Project. And so, the first session is chaos out of creation. Um, so we're going to be looking at Dustin's sermon series to start the year as God is creator or creator God. I can't remember what the title is. And so we're going to either focus on the doctrine and build on it in different directions, or we're going to do something that is either before the Sunday school lesson or follows after it. We've made a commitment that whatever the scripture passage is that you're teaching in Sunday morning, we're not going there. I told him that's what killed it last time. And so I told him you could preach anything you want in and around this, but you can't touch this. And so he's in agreement with that. And so we, we just haven't figured out if it's going to be better to be ahead of you or behind you or reference you. And so that's, that's going to be the first attempt. And so it'll, It'll be a sermon series or two a year that it gets wrapped up with. And then maybe some of the one-off Sundays where we just are filling a Sunday because, you know, a series doesn't need to go that long or, you know, somebody's on vacation and I'm filling in. The, the first place we're going to go is, hey, what's the Gospel Project lesson that, that's coming up? Okay. So people are going to be coming in advance, hopefully in Gospel Project prepared. We're going to still emphasize the doctrine. They're using a seven-arrow method of Bible study, and so they are producing this seven-arrow Bible study, study Bible. Um, even when you get the teacher's book, there are two pages given to each teaching point. So there's, uh, and most of that is commentary. So you'll still have, as a teacher, you're going to have to open your Bible, read it, and then you've got two pages of commentary. Point two, two pages of commentary. Point three, two pages of commentary. And then finally, after you get through all of that, there is the teaching procedure. 
It's a uh, one or two one most. I think it's maybe one. I think it's one page teaching procedure, and then the extras are actually after the lesson, and they're called extras. And it's more commentary or reference to a movie or something like that. But they they did a they put their money in more teaching commentary, more student commentary. They didn't print Bible passages in it. And so they're really pushing Bible usage, which I, I'm excited about. Um, uh, like I said, no printed passages use the Bible. Um, then, like I said, we're talking about this interplay with a couple of sermon series during the year. Now, uh, if you're Explore the Bible, Dustin also is tracking where you're at as well. And when he can, he will make reference to the to what's going on. Explore the Bible as well when it fits. So we're trying not to exclude exclude any of our our groups, but we have to put our focus somewhere. And Gospel Project seems to be the most likely, especially as we begin to look at trying to reach you know people in their thirties and twenties. Questions about that? That cover it so well. You're good. You guys are hungry, aren't you? Everybody's ready for supper. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit. We're going to get bogged down in this one, I bet. Um, let's talk about attendance tools and continue to kind of build some momentum. Um, I, I, I every Sunday, I'm pretty sure we're missing a lot of people. I don't know how many a lot of people is, but. Um, uh, every Sunday, I'm pretty sure we're missing a lot of people. So our our biblical community roles. So this is kind of the process that has happened. Okay, I, I'm just going to tell you here's 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 how we got to where we are today. So during the pandemic, we, which when I say is we, is typically what I tell Karen to do. So I'm I'm owning up to it with we slash I tonight. Okay, so I treated roles with great fluidity, okay, uh, due to who was meeting and not meeting. You know, there were the first few weeks, we didn't know who was meeting when and where, and it kind of, you know, we got organized pretty quickly. Groups did. Some groups didn't. Some groups folded. We just, I just let it go, and just there wasn't any way we could manage that chaos. We'll just ride with it and we'll just deal with the fluidity of the moment. What was important was how were we getting people connected to Bible studies? We weren't worried if they were on the roll. We just wanted them in the Zooms. And so we, we just, I exercised a great deal of fluidity. Coming out of the shutdown, um, I encouraged those returning to attend a Bible study. I didn't care what Bible study. But a Bible study in the building, if you came to, came to the building and you were looking for a Bible study, I tried to find a place for you to go. It was as close a fit as we could get. And um, and we, that's when we moved, made the move to centralized check-in because we could it dealt better. Instead of having roll sheets and trying to find people, you just walked in, you checked in wherever you were, and um, we just marked your attendance, okay? Karen went through every week and she highlighted the groups that were in the building, uh, meeting, and then the groups that weren't. And so as people were marking attendance away, we knew who those folks were. We knew people that marked their attendance that were in some other group. And so we could kind of begin to see what groups we need to focus on trying to get them back. And so, um, that's how we kind of came to why check-in, centralized check-in became what we moved to, was it was just easier to get people to, to know they were here early on because we weren't dealing with but about 100 folks when we, we first came back. It just made that process easier. And then we began to try to expand that system, and we still are expanding the system. Post-pandemic shutdown, the energy has been on getting individuals into groups, recovering as many of our groups as possible, and restructuring some of our inactive groups. So we had about um, 
about six, seven groups that just are no more. Teachers didn't come back or they resigned, um, you know, for whatever reason. So as we've been able to locate leadership like Bill uh, Gaddis is teaching a combination of two groups and we're trying to feed new prospects to it, new people to it. So if you know somebody that's in their 50s or 60s looking for a Bible study, talk Bill up, you know. Um, uh, Bill needs prospects. Bill will contact people. You know, Bill has called through the list, what, or emailed through the list three times now. Yeah. And so Bill's hungry. Feed him, you know. <laughs> Feed Bill. Um, I'm meeting Friday with Tim Hoffman, uh, who's a 30-year-old in our church. He's going to be starting uh, a group, and we're going to take um, two classes, and that's going to be his prospect role, just like Bill's done. And that'll be our last attempt at recovering any of our old groups. So after, after Tim that does that recovery process, we're back to it's new, it's fresh, we're growing, okay? And so that's, we kind of grew to that point. And then um, these steps were good for getting people in Bible study, but have left our roles in a mess, okay? Because um, we've got people all over the place. We've got people in multiple places. We've got people... Uh, and the computer really doesn't care. Uh, obviously, you can walk up. I don't know if you knew this, but you can walk up and put yourself in the seventh grade class and go enjoy that if you wanted. And it'll print a name tag, and you'll look just like you blend in. Okay? And so try it some Sunday. Um, you know, but we, we need to be kind of begin to kind of figure out what we've got again. Similar to like when I arrived nine years ago, we went through a, a period of a month or two, actually it was three months, where we kind of carefully kind of looked at our roles. We looked at who really wasn't coming, you know, made some serious inquiries, and we dropped about 100 people off our roles because they were dead or they had moved to Canada, you know, and just we just hadn't been in the habit of maintenancing the roles. We've kind of got out of that habit, and so we're, we're going to come back to that. And so we need to do an accurate assessment of where we are. So I'm going to, I'm just enlisting your help. If you're watching online, you can pull out your computer and I'm doing this. The goal is by the end of September for all of our groups to have accurately assessed your role. Some of you uh, in this room, this will take you uh, not very long because you manage your groups pretty well. Pat Kramer. This is, she's just going to go done, check. Because, I mean, that's how they, man, they're just, that's how that group of ladies roll. They know who everybody is, where everybody is. And Pat periodically calls me and says, so and so is moved. Please remove them. And we take them off. It's that kind of stuff. And so I just, there are groups that this isn't going to be a big deal. There are other groups that this is going to be kind of like, what? <laughs> you know, I have 120 people on our roll. That's, they may take a while. You may have to enlist some help. So here's what I'm asking. Contact everyone. Um, I, we've come through the pandemic. We're still dealing with mass quarantine, Delta variant, all that stuff. But we just need to get back in the habit of contacting people. Because if we don't say we miss you, if we're not feeding them, hey, here's what we studied, or here's what we're going to study next week, they are going to pretty much make a decision about how warm and loving First Baptist Church is. And I don't want them to get the wrong impression. So some of, your, some of you may need to enlist some help in doing this. Yeah, Bob? What is the sheet that the source document for that exercise? Uh, it would be the roll. I think it's white. Um, and then, do what, Karen? Yeah, it was the top sheet. But I, I will... Um, I'll throw you a couple of bones here, and if you want to, afterwards, I'll even show you how to do it. You can go into Shelby under attendance, and you can, let's say, you don't want to deal with everybody who was here last week. You just want to focus on people who haven't been here in a while. You can go into Shelby attendance, and you can set a date range 
and a number of misses and it will return to you a list of names and phone numbers. Okay? And you can begin to call them, mark it as you made an interact, make it, if you call them, help yourself out by assigning, uh, logging an interaction called so and so and such and so date and log it. That way as you're going back through this, you can say, oh, I called them three weeks ago. Um, I, or I called them last week, I won't call them this week, but I'm gonna send them an email. Um, but at least contact them, email them, call them. If you run into the store, all that, all that counts. But we need to contact everyone, and and then then we need to do some dealing. Okay, the first thing we need to deal with is deal with removing individuals. I call this the low hanging fruit. Okay, so we want to clean up the low hanging fruit. So there are people that when you contact them, we're going to say, well. I'm now attending such and so church. I'm, I won't be back for Sunday school. Go, gosh, thank you. Can I pray for you that God will bless you? And if you ever want to come back, we'd love to have you. And then send Karen an email or go in and assign an interaction to remove them. But just say they requested they be removed from the group. We'll drop them. We'll make all the other changes in the record. Moving on. If somebody, and this is really prevalent in our 70 plus groups because of family members who brought grandma home or moved. Uh, a lot of people moved around. Like if you get in the joy class and, and uh, those upper senior adult classes, there are a lot of people that have been moved. And so if they've moved, that's okay. We can drop somebody who's no longer within easy driving distance of First Baptist. Just tell us that they've moved. If you know where, that's very helpful. You can get an address that's helpful we'll update that the other thing is and i don't know any polite way to say this if they're dead it's okay to take them off the sunday school rolls i'm not that kind of minister of adults okay um and so um and some of those are painful to me i mean uh, esther mcconaughey passed away this week she had been moved by her family and she has passed away and um esther was a great friend it's, it's hard for me to take people like that off the roll, but uh, partly because I won't get to see her again. But we need to do that process, okay? Um, then the, the next kind of a little bit harder is deal with transfers to and from your group. Some of you have gained people from other groups because the schedule change and that always sends people to different classes. Um, some classes have disband disbanded or the teacher changed and, the, and they're looking for a group maybe that's more their age. There's lots of reasons why people move groups. But if you know somebody's moved to another group, con email Karen, tell them what group that they're in, and we'll take them off your roll, make sure they're on the other one. A lot of times we'll just find them in both groups. Okay? So um, that's okay. Let's shuffle the people where they really are so we know what we're dealing with. Okay? Then, uh, a, this is helpful, identify the Karen or I group managers. So in, the way Shelby is set up is there is a, a group leader is what they call it. It's really a group manager. But anybody that we put in that group manager are the people who receive prospect emails or and can uh, mark attendance check attendance, add visitors. And so knowing who those people are, they don't have to be necessarily a group, a leader in your group, but some people, some classes just, you've got a tech person who likes the records and double checking. We just need people that will pull up the record, look around the room and go, yep, everybody's got a green check mark. Good, we're done, moving on. Uh, rather than you taking teaching time to do that or trying to remember when you do it to get home. Sometimes you open up and go, oh, Jeannie stared and check in. Got her. Moving on. Yeah, Bill.
he can see people that have checked in in his group. Um, the y'all don't. I don't believe y'all have the ability to move people on your own. We that's something we have to do. So uh, the the church member may say, "I want to attend this group," or "I want my name tag to say that this week." Um, and that's more of the the shortcutting is what you're choosing, um, and it'll only it'll let you put yourself in any group that you want to. You just get counted as a visitor. That's all it does. Yeah. Habitually, habitually, we have to check the visitor back in, which is a whole different thing that nobody sees or deals with. Like if you typed in a visitor, it goes into a special file that we have to then go check and figure out where to move it to. It tells us where they checked in at, but we have to physically move them to a group. Yeah, we just have to manually check for those. That's the only way to deal with it. Not, not the best part of the system. It does some things really, really well, but guest registration through the app or the check-in is not its strongest point which is, we'll get to that, how we're trying to prove that in a minute. Okay? Yeah, like if you, if, um, if John checked into your class, um, you'll see that you had a visitor and John won't be in his class, but John will be in all of his information will because we know John, he'll show up in the visitor file for us to move him. It's 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 like I said, it's not its strongest suit, but this is the way it is. And and the reason it's done that way is money. Because we pay for member records, this visitor file can have a million people and it doesn't matter. It's, it's just marking attendance is all it's doing. It's just placeholders. So if we want to move somebody out of the placeholder, we have to like manually move them, which isn't hard. It's just clicks. And then we have to mark their attendance. Otherwise, the book's off. Like I said, it's not as strong as suit, but that's how it works. Okay? So, but knowing who you want to work on your records or take attendance for you, that's important because we have to designate them. Okay. Uh, identify the care and I uh, group, you know, who's the leaders, who teaches, who are the apprenticing people, who are your outreach people, and who are your fellowship people. Um, a lot of those people have changed, group designate, you know, functions have changed, that kind of stuff. So if you know those people, we'd love to know that because we have groups for them as well. Okay. Question, any questions about that before I go on? Uh, leader, apprentice, they can be anything. The ones that we track are leader, apprentice, so that's somebody you're actively grooming to teach, that they are getting to train to teach and get to teach regularly. A sub is just somebody that's willing to fill in once in a while if they don't really want to teach long term or be groomed to teach. Um, fellowship leader and outreach leader. Those are the ones that we track. Now, you can have class president, you can have class vice president, travel coordinator, mission coordinator. Yeah, the, what groups have, um, like Pat, I, I'm not laughing, I mean, those are all titles out of Pat Kramer's class. You know, they, you go to one of their class meetings, and I, and I really think they have Sergeant of Arms. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not exactly sure, Charles, but. But they, I know they have a president, a vice president, they have a treasurer, they have a missions coordinator, um, and I, there's they have one other I think that they have too. But they're, you know, the treasurer takes care of where they send the flowers and collecting the, you know, money. It's all very well organized. I don't need to mess that up. I just need to know who do we send prospects to, who's, who do we encourage fellowship through. Those kinds of things, okay? Karen, if you're doing this too much, you can turn the temperature up because I knocked it down to get it cold. So taking attendance is a Shelby thing, okay? And so help. 
we need help with attendance. And so the kiosks are pretty much bulletproof. However, a senior adult can wreck one in a heartbeat. Okay, I, I sit down there and I try to tear them up and then If I came back on, Jeannie, they're getting me batteries, so I'll flip back off one more time. Oh, I pulled something. But anyway, so we need five or six people that will man the kiosk just to kind of help people punch the buttons. Um, and then the other thing is, if it acts up, know how to restart it. Because when it restarts and it just runs through the process and just resets itself. And so that's really about the only two things that anybody can do to it. And so if somebody fills the buffer, you just have to restart. It takes about a minute, minute and a half, and it writes itself. But we just, those are the great two computer skills. I can press two buttons and turn it off or restart it, or I can um, change the labels. Though we need people with that high degree of technical skill. Um, then we would like to have a couple of people that would help people like Karen and Nicole and so we can use them in both buildings. What we want to get to is to where somebody walks up in the tablet kiosk mode, we can quickly enter guest information and print them a badge um, that says today's guest and then take them to the proper Sunday school class. So as we're looking for some, these people, three or four people, need to have a high degree of typing accuracy and good people skills. So if you've got people in your group that could do those kinds of jobs, could engage people in a conversation, type in the basic information and hit print. We have wireless printers that literally they can bring their device, run in the app and send it straight to the wireless printer and just moves the process through. So um, that would be really helpful if we had those people. Okay. So if you're listening, I'm going to, the audio is going to go away for a minute.
I hope the audio came back. Anyway, we're moving on. Um, but we do need help with those uh, couple of tasks on Sunday. So if you know somebody over the next couple of weeks, please help us. We're trying to recruit those people so that we can input people straight into the system. Because one of the problems we were having is we would get guest information like uh, Nancy, guest of. And sometimes we might not know who Nancy was, obviously. But we might not. Even, but Nancy may have came as a guest of somebody we don't know either, and so the accuracy of information that we were getting, unless it came from our Sunday school on the green sheets, was not very good. Um, and so we're trying to up the in the the level quality of intake of information that we're going to feed you. But we need some help because every once in a while Karen's got to be out. We, we actually are paying Karen to be here for an hour on Sunday morning to just man stuff and take care of things. Not necessarily take care of your things, but to take care of guests and try to enter information. Nicole does the same thing. We would like to expand that to across the street. So we, we do need help. Moving on. Um, if your group meets in the building, encourage self-check-in or using the app. So here's the thing with the app. The app has a couple of interesting things to it. One is it will only work within a half mile of the building. Okay? So now you have to ask yourself, how does the app know that you're within a half mile of the building? It, that is dependent on how fast your phone talks to the cell phone towers and gives its location. So. If you have location sharing turned off, guess what won't work? The Shelby Next check-in app. Okay? And so it took us a week or two to figure that one out. The other thing is, is that in that location process, our, your cell phone has to identify with the cell phone tower, and it gets some information from the cell phone tower and then passes it to Shelby. And everybody's phone does that at a different rate. So if basically, if you sit in the parking lot for about 30 seconds with the air conditioning on, let's, and then pull your phone out, open the app. By that time, the cell phone tower's done its thing. And if you can, then you can tell it, hey, I want my things to print out in the atrium, or I want my things to print out over here. Just go by and pick them up. And at that point, you're checked in. Um, and then you just have to walk by and pick it up because it will be printed out and waiting. Yes, Karen? The one, it, it goes to the atrium one. And so they, it, but we don't have very many people that go to, the, that send them to the atrium. Most people are sending them to, or send them to this building. And then we have a high school girl, Daisy, uh, sorts them out and makes nightly old family stacks and stuff. And so, um, because most of our Bible studies are in, still in this building, okay? So that's, that's easy. Or just walk up to the check-in and check yourself in on the check-in. And that's where we need some help, because sometimes, you know, getting the, finding the right button to press the first time is a little bit difficult, because, um, but if you're in the building, encourage self-check-in, okay? When you meet, regardless of method, day, time, designate a manager to double check your attendance. You know, just have somebody in your class that towards the end of the class pulls out the app because if you're a late arriver, you're not thinking checking in, and you're just going to try to get into Bible study. You know, we want to catch those people uh, is what we're trying to do. But just someone to just double check your attendance. Uh, is hugely helpful, uh, especially to Karen. Um, then in, invite guests to be members and add them to your group. Yes, ma'am. So, Connie, this is probably the first thing she's going to do with the So, you can check in here on the app. Yeah, as they, it, on the, if she goes to the, like she used to, go to the group and where you check all the green checks. She can actually pull her phone out, lay it on the table, and watch people checking in in the kiosk system. It, it's real time. When I can sit there and watch groups checking in. And so, 
And then it's pretty easy just towards the end of the class, punch the front and go, everybody's here. Close it and move on. Or add the one person that you missed, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, John. Pardon? Early on, there was a lot of confusion because we were doing the name thing. And some people thought that was to check in for worship. And so that's why we, when we could, did away with the name thing, a lot of that went away. And then um, we've debated about just labeling a Bible study check-in like we did in this building. They just say welcome across the street. But to change one of those things is $400. And I just am too tight. And so um, uh, eventually I think I'd like to have some more cabinetry, nicer, that maybe matches that desk that Kurt's with rather than those little cheesy fold-up tables. But it is what it is today. But there was some confusion, especially while that process was going on. So, um, yeah, and yeah, you can uncheck them <laughs> if they they're playing hooky. By all means, uncheck them. Um, obviously, you're kind of catching on that our pastor is really big on reaching people. You know, if somebody if people are coming to your class, invite them to join. Uh, you can send Karen a note or I a note, and we'll definitely do that. Um, as much information as you can give us, that kind of stuff. We're trying not to be sending out lots of paper and that kind of stuff, and so we're we're trying to leverage the tools that we we pay good money for. Uh, and then, uh, invitation to your Bible study is evangelism too. Encourage your class members to invite friends to Bible study. That's a, that is a, a good evangelistic step. Um, one of the things that we are beginning to think as far as the staff is that our people really don't understand when we're talking about evangelism, what we're talking about. I think a lot of our people think that that is still going and just knocking on a door and saying, if you die tonight, you know, what would be your fate? And so there really is a whole range of steps that are involved in being evangelistic. And so we, we, it still holds true that if someone comes, if four guests, lost guests, came and joined a Bible study, within a year, probably three of them will be a Christian. It's still a bang for the buck. Bible study, an evang a, a gospel-oriented Bible study, is still best bang for the buck in evangelism because they, they already have discipling relationships. They have... Uh, friends that can help them with understanding of the Bible. They have people that will walk the aisle with them. All that is possible. So think of, you begin to talk about Bible study is not only an evangelism tool, but it is our primary discipleship tool. You know, we, we spend, you know, hours and hours a year in Bible study. That's discipleship. Um, any questions about that? If you want to go out and look at a kiosk, if you've never done that, we'll be more than happy to do that after the class. My tummy's starting to growl. I need to pick up the pace. Um, so pandemic issues and fixes, okay? So these are this is a slide that I did a couple of times ago, and I brought it back, and I wanted to say, here's the fix. Obviously, we've lost leadership. The fix is recruiting, training, and using apprentices. We need to get more people involved in getting comfortable facilitating a discussion of God's Word. They don't have to be a master theologian. Um, you know, and, and uh, you know, Susan called today with a great theological question, and I had to call her back because I didn't have a great theological answer right off the cuff. But, it, you know, I'll help, I'll help you research stuff, you know, that kind of thing. And I don't know what happened to the air conditioning. It just okay. I, I'm thinking you turned the heat on. Uh, it's the it's the it's the bottom two buttons, not the top two. Um, but the uh, we've lost units. We're we're down several units. The fix is calling existing units to begin to act missional again. I'm just trying to reclaim people and make sure that they're there, but begin to think, how do we become missional in helping start new units? Um, and everybody loves when I talk about that. Um, and then um, 
we've unage graded. That's one of the issues of the pandemic. The fix is beginning to encourage age appropriate group attendance. I, I thought about busting out my favorite cartoon and it's Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith is sitting in a preschool chair with his knees up you know, and the, the kindly Mrs. Jones is encouraging him to promote from the four-year-olds. Mm -hmm. He's been there long enough, you know, and so we need to kind of begin to some folks back in the right spots. Um, loss of habit of just attending. The fix is regular and consistent communication, contacting people, letting them know they're missed. Here's what's going on in Bible study. Loss of connection. That's fixed by the number of people involved in outreach and care ministry. You know, involve other people in your class to, to call some people. It's okay to, it, at home, print, Shelby will let you print out a class list of people who've been absent, you know, two months in a row. Take a pair of scissors and cut it up and say, hey, will you contact these people? Will you contact these people? Will you contact, make a note on the back and bring it back to me next week. And then if you don't want to enter the interaction data, we will. That way we'll you know, the next person knows we'll be able to contact. But we talked about these pandemic issues. I want to come back and give you the quick fixes or the easy fixes or the right fixes. Uh, any questions about those? That's pretty much old hat stuff, but I think it, we just need to revisit some of those things periodically. So let's talk about the church health survey. Everybody enjoy it? I hated it, but I, I quit. I, I tried quitting it like 50 questions and I fe felt guilty. Um, then I, I really considered quitting it 100 questions and I felt really guilty and then I finished it. Um, but here's, here's some just cursory things I want, because people are asking what happened or is anything going to happen with it. And so uh, I want to give you some regular updates as to where we are in that process, just so you can answer those questions. And so Here's what we know from the Church Health Survey. This is the, the biggest, this is the first, some of the things off of the first page, okay? And so, happen to have my copy right here, and so if you wanted to check my validity, I'm not lying. We had 294 responses. That was really good, because if you tried to be on Sunday when Jared promoted it, if you were number 61, it locked you out. You couldn't get in. We had to go in and get the, the limiter taken off because people hit really did a great job in responding to it. So that's awesome. I mean, we've ever, even the people have talked about it uh, that behind the survey. 112 were male, 180 were female. That kind of mirrors the kind of distribution of male to female in our, our church. Years of church membership was interesting to me. So I didn't put them all up here because it's a pie chart, but this is what's interesting. So I put together enough to add up to at least 200. So people who are church members six to 10 years, 54 of them, 11 plus years, 153. So 207 of the 294 people have been a member of First Baptist at least six or more years. The vast majority, 11 plus years. That's interesting. That tells us we don't have a whole lot of new folks at First Baptist. Now we got to start thinking, how do we start getting new folks? Because uh, unfortunately, I'm in this group. That means I'm part of the older folks. So how do we begin to pray and think about new folks? Um, years of a, uh, as a Christian, well, this one didn't take me long to get past 200. 11 plus years as a Christian, 284. So the vast majority of the people who took the survey have been a Christian at least 11 plus years. We don't have a lot of baby Christians at First Baptist. We don't have a lot of new members and we don't have a lot of baby Christians. Maybe, we, maybe this, our pastor's on to something about becoming more of an evangelistic church. Age of the people who took the survey, so 50 to 59, there were 62 people. 60 to 69, there were 62 people. And then 70 plus, there was 106, so that gives us 120 out of 294. 
So most everybody that took the survey was over 50. Matter of fact, I think it was only eight teenagers. Is that right, Bob? It's it's really low. It's it's I think it's really low. It's, I think it's eight. It's it's not very high. Okay, so that that tells us something. And then um, here's the part that you need to know: the staff has already spent four hours ish, plus our own individual reading time. That's outside of the discussion. We've spent about four hours just in review of the questions. What do we think about this one? Do you think it's accurate? You know, how does this question and this question fit? Why do these two questions seem to contradict each other out of different areas? So right now, if you wanted to say what's going on with the church survey, the staff, the long-range planning team, and uh, I don't know who else Dustin is involved at this point, we're in the initial digestion mode, okay? So we, we've, we've kind of looked at the data, and now the task next week when we come back from staff meeting is, you know, what's your opinion? And now we're going to start art haggling about what's your opinion about what this really tells us about our church, okay? Yeah, John. 53 plus 106 is not 100. I goof it. Yeah. 62 and 62. Oh, I see what I did. <laughs> I got so wrapped up in heading this. I Okay. Yeah. They are. Uh, that's and that's the like um well, it, let me tell you. I'll just I can read it to you this way. Yeah, let me just flip the page open here. I show you my book, but I've written things in it. Maybe about some of us. I don't know. Um, age, 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 age. Okay, less than eighteen. Five. Eighteen to twenty-nine. Four. Thirty to thirty-nine. Twenty-one. Forty to forty-nine. Thirty-two. So, um, it, that part didn't surprise me because I have millennial sons, and and I I told Dustin this. Um, I I stay at Hampton Inns. I know every within five minutes of checking out of the Hampton Inn, I get a survey from the president of Hilton, just wanting to know my valued opinion. And I said, I'm tired of taking that ten question survey, you know. And and so the the lowness of that doesn't surprise me. Uh, I just think it is reflective. But um, when you start looking at that with some of the age, the other things that you know, we we don't have a lot of young people's voices in our church right now, and so that I think that's more the issue. But this is the part I really wanted you. Well, and we won't publish my math, right? <laughs> Even though it's streamed all over the world. Um, but I think what our people need to hear is that we're in the process of reviewing this right now. And so that's the, the importance of it is, is that it's in review. It's not just our pastor looked at it and we're putting it on a shelf. We're, it's going to generate some hard questions for us that our staff's going to have to answer, our long-range planning is going to answer, that it's probably going to come back to y'all at some point for some input. What do you think about some of these things? It's going to begin to grow its reach because Dustin is a data I don't want to say he's data driven but Dustin is someone who appreciates data he likes to be fed good data yeah it does and so especially a fresh one um, and so um, this process to him of understanding this and in the history of things. So if he, he saddles up to some of you that have been around a while and, and asks you a kind of an off the wall, what do you think question, just kind of know it's probably related to the church health. There's a question that he's trying to, to make make sense or he needs some history behind it, that kind of stuff. And so, but that's where it's at as of Tuesday.
Now, when we get together in three months, I'll give you an update. Or if you want an update any given time, just let me know, and I'll tell you where where we are as a staff in that. Okay. Yeah, we'll, 425, we'll just call it that. And then Bible studies, 350. Yeah, if you want to look at it that way. But it's uh, as many people that budget that voted on the this. It's almost as many people that voted on the church budget. So I mean, it's in, in norms with the amount of stuff we get back normally. If that if that's a decent answer. But anyway, that's just more for your information. Um, we we talked about the schedule. I told you I'd give you an update on the schedule. I had hoped that we would be dealing with the schedule change right about now. But the order in which the change is going to be dealt with is going to go this way. Dustin's going to walk us through the church health survey because it's going to be part of the driver to some of these long-term questions. We are also, and I didn't bring the book, we were reading the book as a staff, and I think the long-range planning team is as well, God Dreams, God Dreams. And, uh, you know, it's a process of identifying the style of our church, those types of things. And there, that, that book is going to help formulate some questions about the church health survey. And I think once we have an idea of where we want to go based upon that, then we're going to begin to answer questions about what the schedule is going to be for a longer period of time. So I, I can tell you, you know, whether we, you know, we tweaked it. It had pros and cons and all that stuff. It's probably not even going to be a staff agenda item for at least two more weeks. So I think we'll be in this schedule at least until December. Like it or hate it, I'm just giving you my opinion. Because like I said, it's not even on staff meeting for two weeks. And then I think it'll take six to, if we made a decision then, it's six or eight weeks to make the change. Well, um, it's not impacting children's ministry or student ministry or preschool ministry because they have all their facilities. The group that's impacting is adults. When Tim starts his group in September, I will have used all of my spaces unless the joy class folds this week. That's the rub, to be honest. And then I have, uh, we have several of our senior adults, like Bob's class is a good example that the distance is too far. And it is, it is a, and we, we've, everybody knows that, and it's not anything I can do about it. We've tried to be as creative as we can and those kinds of things. Jerry's class has a pretty good hike. Um, you know, those rooms that we were turning two and three times, we just can't do that right now. That's, that's the rub. trying to cut the distance. But it still doesn't really help a lot because if you park over here and you go to worship, you still have to walk all the way over there and walk all the way back. And so like Jerry's, Jerry's class, we have people in Jerry's class that I figure they are walking five blocks to get to Jerry's class and then five blocks back. So I'm saying you know, you're not too far. <laughs> yeah. And then that's just a, that's that's where it's that's where it's impacting us. And he goes, I'm going to come out and I'm going to start pushing start groups, start groups, start groups. And I got an old mother Hubbard shoe. I can't even get it unlaced right now. And that's that's the rub. That's where the schedule is going to have to change. We're either going to have to like get creative with with space, reallocate, or change schedule. That's the only options. So. But I just wanted to let you know, here's where the process is. I, I kind of kind of told some people maybe coming back in September, not even on the schedule to be talked about for at least two weeks. So that's just where we are, okay? Um, I just said all that. Um, what are your questions, comments, anything that you want to bring up, that you want information on? Place you want to take me to supper? Jeannie, start thinking about where you want to eat supper, okay? Because um, I got one more slide. It, any other questions? Any, any serious questions? I don't want to put you off.
But I, I appreciate your time, and I realize I've gone long. I, I do want to remind you about this, though. Get ready, be successful, okay? As we roll into September, clean your room. At least once a month, go through and get rid of the old literature, Throw the, make sure the trash has gotten taken out. But just work to try to make your space as, as attractive as possible. I realize some of our rooms, that's really hard to do. This room gets used. I mean, it's on its third setup this week. But, you know, as a Sunday school leader, take ownership. If you think it needs to be thrown away, you throw it away and I'll back you. Okay? That's just the way it is. Promote involvement. You know, lead a group discussion. Don't teach the lesson. Uh, the more people we can get involved in the lesson, um, you know, one of the interesting things off the church health survey was um, how excited people were about Bible study. The vast majority are undecided. They're not excited about it. They're not really turned off by it. It's just kind of like, eh, it's Bible study. Um, uh, use a variety of methods and resources. They may not be your favorite method, but it may be somebody else's. I'm not a big music person, but every once in a while I'll break out and say, let's listen to this song. The lyrics are important because I know I have people in my group sometimes that are very music. Plan regular fellowship. The, the groups, in our, and I've told this to our staff Tuesday, the groups in our church that, that are growing are over 50. They all share one common characteristic. They fellowship. Heart and soul. They get together in fellowship. They go to a restaurant. Jerry's class. They've been on the parking lot, socially distanced. I've been there. I've also been to, you know, uh, the park and uh, what's the catfish place? Um, but they go to restaurants. Uh, I know Bob's group gets together fairly regularly. You know, we start looking at, you know, Pat Kramer's class gets together. The men get together. You know, we have groups that are getting together to eat, share, laugh and pray. If that's all you do to the fellowship, it would strengthen your Bible study. Promote daily Bible reading and personal evangelism. And then finally, uh, plan a fellowship. Yes, it's that important. If there's one thing that we're really going to try to work hard with our under 40 groups is planning a fellowship, getting together and becoming friends. You know, the, the glue that holds a lot of our groups together, those friendships and relationships were built, you know, sharing wedding pictures and, you know, telling bad date stories. And, you know, I think of all the things that I've been to for Christmas parties and questions I've had to answer about my marriage and my upbringing and all that, you know, those are what let people know people. Okay. That's it. For the good of the cause, we're done. I'm calling it. Let's pray, and we'll be out of here, okay? Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this evening and for uh, the folks that are here in the room, the folks that have watched online and, and stayed with us to the bitter end and even through a battery change. Lord, just uh, give everybody a safe trip going home. Uh, keep us uh, safe until we can meet again on Sunday. Um, Lord, and we just are so thankful for this church. I know what it means in my life and the life of my family, for the people who have encouraged me and blessed me in many different ways. Could I call them friends? Lord, um, we love you. I pray this in your name. Amen. Thank you for being here.